And hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another edition of Rogue 420. And very excited today. You know, we had last week we had uh, guests appearing for our live stream, and today we're we're kind of repeating the same process. Today we have uh, Kim McCarthy of Harvest and Plume, and also Laura Madison of the Cannabis Oklahoma hello. Magazine. Uh, ladies, hopefully you guys are doing very well. Had a lot of great response from our last podcast, uh, our last live stream. So here we're doing it again. So uh, so. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so before we went live, we started talking about just, you know, just giving some updates and everything. Uh, Laura, last week I had you go first. Kim, I'm going to have you go first this time and talk about everything that's what's on your radar in terms of your your magazine, other great things that you're working on. So go for it. Absolutely. Thanks. Um, Well, let's see. We just dropped September's issue and I changed the format from traditional magazine to more photojournalism. And um, <clears throat> see that the response has been very good and excited about moving forward. That actually, because of changing the format, um, someone reached out to me from Massachusetts and this person is involved with the Metamorphosis Retreat. And it has to do with, and, and honestly, I don't know enough about it to talk about the group. It's um, the Economic Empowerment Group. And I only know a high level of, of this organization or this group, but it's pretty amazing because it's bringing together all these individuals who um, are in the, the cannabis, both sides of the industry and how they're overcoming certain, it could be cultural, it could be um, economical, but all these issues that they're overcoming to be these great successes in Massachusetts. And you have to be awarded. Um, it's not something you just say, I'm um, an economic empowerment group member. Um, You have to be invited and accepted, but in order to be invited, you have to meet all these qualifications, and I don't know anything about that. Yeah. But that's exciting. um, That's exciting. Congratulations. It's very exciting for all these people coming in, and we have, uh, what I say we, um, they they want me to work on um, a booklet, uh, but mainly of their speakers and um, of this event that's happening. And anyway, it's bringing together a lot of people and um, everything that Laura and I said the last time that, you know, it's the Wild West and people taking advantage, advantage of each other. And, and this is exactly what this group is about, is not allowing that to happen and raising and elevating the communities because there's plenty of room for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Fact, I, think, I think that may be their slogan. <laughs> plenty of room for everyone. And just a really quick uh, follow up into that, because some people in, in regards to when you say photojournalism and the shift in that, can you explain a little bit of what what photojournalism is just so that uh, the listeners understand that, please? Sure. It's where the artwork, um, think of National Geographic or Time, it's the artwork is actually telling the story. There are still words there, um, you know, we still got to read, but um, it's really the, the piece of work that's telling the story, and you can get a lot of the emotion and a lot of the, the, the back energy of it when you see the picture and then you read the words and it comes together and gives you a a very different experience. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. Very exciting. Lots of great things going on. And uh, uh, Laura, what's going on with you? What's new with cannabis Oklahoma magazine? Well, there's lots of, lots of new things. So we've, um, we've had some, some new people in the industry. Well, they're old people of the industry, you could say, Um, but we have some people, you know, old school company, and he's going to be writing a new um, a feature in our publication that basically focuses on the patient and, you know, brings awareness and gives them a voice to to share their experiences on that side of, of the fence and, and how they're feeling and or how they're receiving, you know, care, et cetera. And then um, we have a uh, yield apothecary group who we're going to be focusing on pediatric um recommendations and basically we're going to have pediatric um uh events every probably twice a month to start off with but we're going to have that to where you know parents or you know people who have pediatrics that are ill they are scared and so we try to we want to bring awareness and, and give them the support to feel comfortable bringing their child in for treatment or you know have that support readily and available for them um, and then we have obviously the the event that's that's coming up on September 11th for the healing for Bella and mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Regina Nelson, um, 
of ECS therapy. We have uh, Dr. Dory Abbott, who is a PhD in um, uh, holistic healing and uh, uh, quantum scanning or quantum electronic frequency treatment, um, a nutritionist. And then we also have the hyperbaric oxygen treatment. Um, Kevin, who owns a hyperbaric plus, he's going to be there. We're going to be doing a documentary that starts live for six months. That's following the process of her healing. So it's a, a lot of exciting things are coming and we're creating a lot of awareness and educating a lot of people. And it's really awesome. Yeah. And, and that's I'm so I'm excited about, Good. about Laura and cannabis, Oklahoma magazine and, um, Oklahoma medical, um, OMCIRC, it's always easier to come off my mouth, um, <laughs> that they're, <clears throat> excuse me, that they're opening this up to let people know kids are misdiagnosed a lot. And on top of that, whatever they're diagnosed with, traditional medicine may not actually be doing anything for you. I, it's a friend of mine, his 10 year old son has cancer. And I keep texting him and saying, Rick Simpson oil, but you know, you, and he's just in Wyoming. It's only two hours away. Right. And they still, they still travel down here for chemo. And I think, Oh my God. It's scared. I mean, we just had two, we had two confirmed um, cases of curing cancer basically with the Rick Simpson and RSO um, last week, uh, a really good family friend, um, she was diagnosed with high stage thyroid cancer and she only had one treatment and went back to the oncologist and has no signs at all or traces of cancer. Yeah. Then today I, I ran into a couple and they had just come out of their oncologist and they had no signs and they had only been taking a month worth of the treatment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we are seeing healing everywhere and it's, I mean, it's just a really good feeling to be a part of, of such a great movement. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that's what I love about both your work. It involves, patient driven, patient centered, you know, patient focused and the healing process that, that occurs. Uh, you know, I, I think in part uh, when we do speak to the community, when we're out speaking in public, there's still a lot of people that are very hesitant. Uh, let, let's face it, there's still a, a major educational piece that needs to take place. And in part, and I think both of you can agree with this, is that until uh, cannabis is removed from the schedule, uh, you're not going to be able to see a lot of the studies. A lot, a, a lot of people, whenever I talk to them, about, well, I need to wait and because you know the, the medical community, the, the, the information is just not there yet, the clinical studies, I'm, I'm waiting to read those reports. They're slowly coming in, but unfortunately, it's mostly from other parts of the, of the of the world that are doing these clinical studies, these these research. In fact, most people don't understand that, it, like today, if you were to, uh, to apply and get a clinical research, that cannabis that's shipped to them, you know, comes from just one place. And I think it's the University of uh, Mississippi, is that correct? You know, mm -hmm. Or somewhere where the cannabis, they show, they've shown pictures of it before of stuff that's, that's uh, you know, uh, grown in other parts of the country and then they show the ones that they send for the research and it's old it's you know i'm sure that that it's there's no cannabinoids in it you know whatever but that's part of the struggle so the education yeah. piece of it just so huge so what what do you guys think what have you guys seen in terms of your exposure with people that uh, have been a little bit hesitant it's mostly the education piece what uh what, what do you guys think about that I, 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 Laura. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I think it's, I mean, it's just, it's lack of knowledge. It's, it's fear-based. Um, you know, it's, it's about control and it's about greed and it's about, you know, funding <laughs> pharmaceutical companies and, you know, the, the insurance companies making money. And if they heal people, well, then they're not making any money. So we, we just have to create as many avenues as possible and make as many connections all over to increase the percentage of people who are edu educated or who have experienced it on a personal level or who have family members who have been healed and start creating that awareness so that we can educate the people who are scared to do these things because i mean it's it's changing so many lives and it's just really it's sad to see someone go for chemo when you just saw someone over here be completely healed with one dose of RSO and they're killing themselves because they're, you know, they are tearing down their immune systems by, I mean, the medicine that's supposed to heal is just killing them. So it's pretty amazing to be a part of the educating on this process. So there, you're right, Carlos, there has to be a, a ton more, <laughs> yep. a ton more of education. And that's what we're trying to do here. Yep, absolutely. Kim, what's I you? I think that um, it comes down to a belief system. And, and here's the irony. We were all raised with, you know, not pot and the, um, you know, the DARE program and 
So everybody bought into that system, which of course we all know what it was fueled by. But um, fast forward to today, and um, it, it's a little bit different because the largest segment of, of medicated users or recreational really that are reporting, um, <laughs> that's like my parents and my generation. You know, it's like the 50s, 60s and, and more. So then if my kids were, you know, older and, and they had kids and they'd be looking at me and thinking, you know, oh, that's grandma. You know, it's just that silly thing grandma does. <laughs> and really it should be, you know what, I'm, I'm relieving a lot of arthritic pain. I'm, you know, with my thyroid, with, you know, whatever these issues. Mm -hmm. And then you look at, at Laura with Bella and you look at those other generations with this belief system and then they see this beautiful child and say, well, we know nothing else is working, so let's just keep not working at it. And that's just stupidity to me. Ignorance and stupidity. So once we're breaking down that belief system and, and we're going to narrow it in, so with Laura Green and Healing Bella and then with the older generation, somehow we're going to crunch into that yeah. Oreo of that yeah. little, big generation that's still fighting it. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. There's a great uh, book. It's uh, written by uh, Jesse Ventura. It's called The Marijuana Manifesto. And I'm not sure if either one of you have read it, but I, I've listened to it twice now uh, just because the amount of education in it, uh, the it goes back to all the days of prohibition about when, uh, you know, even from the beginning of, of, you know, the term marijuana and the slang name, you know, coming to it and why it was developed. It goes back to uh, patient zero and talks about uh, the initial patient zero in California that fought the system. I believe it was in San Francisco. He won the award. He had to, he had to leave the United States in exile, go to Canada. It's just to go back and hear the history of it is just, just truly amazing. Amazing, And now what the work that you guys are doing is just kind of moving that forward. Um, and unfortunately in today's uh, uh, culture a little bit, and I really try, it's really hard not to get in the political conversation in regards to this is what the left believe, this is to the right. So I have a tendency really to try to avoid that and bring more people together you know, into this, you know, understanding why they feel that the way they do, uh, whether they're big, they're backed by uh, big pharma. And there's there's a real fine balance with our work. And why I say that is because, you know, whenever we out there and we start claiming um, the medical properties and medicinal values, the last thing that we want is on the backside is for big pharma uh, to come in and the government to come in and say, OK, well, yeah, you're absolutely right. All this has medical properties. So guess what? Now it has to be we're taking, over. <laughs> we're taking over. Exactly. So it's a real delicate balance. And I, and I think that's important for all of our listeners uh, to hear is that, you know, we're not advocating for, you know, for big pharma to step in this. We want to keep this plant natural. We want each patient's right to, to, to grow their own medicine in the healing process. We want people to have the right to, to have the choice and not feel judged by it. We, we want to create awareness so that they have the, the ability to choose which route they want to go and what benefits their belief system. No, I don't want to, we don't want to force our perception on anyone, but we would like to educate them on both processes. And, and that way they can see from the whole, you know, what will work and what won't work and allow them to make the choice for themselves. Because that, I mean, that's what it's all about. We have the natural ability to heal ourselves as a whole. We have the resources available to us. We just want to educate people for that. Yep, yeah, absolutely. That's all. That's it. Yep. And I want to know, <laughs> that's it. And I want to turn your attention to because I think that there's a, a growing consensus, uh, especially at the federal. I mean, it's pretty neat to think that we very well could see some type of federal uh, legislation uh, take place here within the next year or two. And I'm afraid that what's going to happen is we're going to see a lot more negative uh, news uh, from the from the mainstream media. Uh, really, you know, again, uh, carrying on the whole thing about cannabis and how how bad it is. And I, I would cue it up and play it, but I don't want to mess up the live stream so that we could all t listen to it. But I just, you know, it was it was very disheartening to listen to a uh, Fox News episode and it involved uh, Tucker Carlson. And uh, I Tucker Carlson has covered a lot of different things. But in this particular news brief, he specifically took an entire segment 
and really was blaming the events unfolding in Texas, uh, the, the, the mass shootings, and, and attempting to tie these directly to cannabis and saying that, you know, the cannabis, the, the THC can create, you know, a sense of anxiety and, and you know, in, in, the, in the bloodstream, the toxicology report, there's cannabis. It's just very disheartening to hear this same rhetoric of years past come into and i think it's because the national attention is changing you're seeing cannabis in particular with medical cannabis you know close to 70 percent nationally approve of some type of medical legislation and i think that's why they're going to be pushing more of this false narrative uh, what, what do you guys think i think it's like a zip it really is all that pus and bacteria has just been accumulating and now that it's being exposed it's the last ditch effort Really, I mean, I think that's the best analogy. I mean, the best way it is, anything can be blamed for for the fall. I mean, there uh, alcoholism. I mean, there's so many things, so many ways you can look at it. It's finding a balance. I mean, there's there there has to be one and the other because there you can't have one without the other. So there has to be a fine balance in anything you do in your life, whether it be with medication, whether it be with living, whether it be with eating, um, watching TV, you can create a negative out of anything. You can create a positive out of anything. And it, it's basically your choice as to how you want to, you know, grow forward in your life and what you want to, you know, in, envelope your energy in. Absolutely. I like to, I like to flip the narrative when I hear people specifically talk about that and talk about some of the risk associated, whether it's uh, you know, children end up with it, all this kind of statements. And in part, if you think about it by keeping, you know, cannabis, you know, illegal, it's really forcing that. So, so until you start achieving some of those clinical studies, until you start having, you know, testing a uh, standard of testing, uh, you know, kit, you know, the childproof packaging until you establish, you know, some of those guidelines and you keep it illegal, that really is what keeps uh, in part the, uh, the, the illegal market going, you know, which in part they may, you know, use too much pesticides or, or even use it all together, you know, creating some of these harmful products. So the sooner that they do remove cannabis from the schedule, uh, decriminalize it, the better that, that that will actually help the industry. What do you what do you guys think about that? I think it will 110 um, percent. I mean, by keeping it, you know, illegal, we're we're forcing children and forcing, you know, people to sell the drug, um, to put themselves in negative and violent situations. Like I said, there's a balance between violence. You, you can be violent in any situation. Um, it's, it's how you are, I mean, yes, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I find it interesting when you look at the countries that have legalized, I mean, look at the country that, that I believe it was Uruguay. I may be wrong, but I think it was Uruguay where they legalized everything. They said, you know what, wipe the slate clean, it's all legal, and we'll just kind of deal with it as we go along. And shockingly, violence went down, crime went down, drug addiction, went, everything went down. And this is a country that just kind of threw spaghetti on a wall and said, go for it. Right, yeah. So I think a lot of it has to do with um, with with deregulating, with the, the whole legalization, with and the, the education and destigmatizing. Yeah, very well said. Very well said. Everything has said it goes in. Right, and that's why it's important. The the work that uh, you, that Laura, you know, that you're doing with uh, Cannabis Oklahoma Magazine and Kim with Harvest and Plume, and even with Rogue Four Twenty, you know, working to advance the cause, uh, the education piece of it. That's why the work that we're doing is so important. Uh, let's go into closing comments. You know, uh, I'll start with you, Laura. Just closing comments for our listeners. Uh, what else? What else is on your radar? Or if you want to go ahead and plug your social media ha handles and your website as well, please. Um, I'm just, I, I think that it is so awesome that we get to have a part of this opportunity to, to be a part of the education. Um, it is so important for people to know that they have support systems out there for other avenues of, in healing. Um, it's important to know that, that they're not going to be judged for trying to find something that will work for their, for their health issue. And I, you know, anybody out there who is looking for, for help or looking for some, you know, support, I welcome them to contact the magazine. Um, I, I would do anything that I can. And if I can't do it, I'll find someone who can. Awesome. Um, so the, um, I can be found on Facebook at Canna Oklahoma magazine, um, or at www.cannabisoklahoma.com. Um, I'm any, anybody who would like to reach out to us, you're open. Excellent. Very good. Kim. I, you know, 
honestly, I'm looking forward to healing Bella. I really am, um, you know, because I know this little girl and I've seen her and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I look forward to, to not having all the things that she has to deal with or her family has to deal with um, so that she can be just a normal kid. And, and she can't be at this time. So for my closing statement, I'm looking forward to, to seeing this progression and, and knowing more about all of those healing techniques that they're incorporating. So that's going to be you know, that's interesting to me. Get my fingers in there. Opening the door for other people to be healed also. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so my social media handles, it's, the magazine is Harvest and Plume, but it's an ampersand. But you can't do that with any of your handles. So they're all Harvest and Plume. Um, Facebook. Um, uh, Instagram. I'm not, uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, it's actually uh, me, Kim McCarthy, or the Pipeline Strategies. I don't have a, a, a Harvest and Plume on there. But we're setting up the YouTube and Twitter. is the same thing, Harvest and Plume. Mm -hmm. Instagram, same thing. Excellent. Very cool. We want to thank you both for a great conversation. Again, for uh, Rogue 420 fans, please make sure to uh, go to the websites, like, share in your network. Uh, more importantly, uh, make sure you subscribe uh, you know, to their websites so that way you can stay in tune of new releases, information release. So Kim, Laura, I want to thank you both very much for a great uh, discussion today. Thanks. Thank you. Great right. seeing you again. Take care. Great seeing you as well. Bye.